Tired of paying your electricity bill? Or perhaps need a DIY option for your electric vehicle or perhaps your caravan? I have 3,018650 cells that I've recovered from used laptops and I plan on upgrading my home energy storage system with an extra 25 kilowatt hours of storage. We have got all of the cells sorted here to 100 milliamp hour packs. So we've got 24s, 25s, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, up to 3400 milliamp hour cells. Now what I need to do is upgrade the resolution a little bit. So I'll be grabbing some packs and I'll be sorting these cells. So we've got a 2300 milliamp hour cell there. So we've got 2300 milliamp hour to 2350 and then 2350 to 2400 milliamp hours. Building a battery this way does take quite a bit longer, but it does allow us to build a much stronger, healthier, and hopefully longer lasting battery. All the cells are sorted into 50 milliamp hour groups now. So we've got 23, 24 low, 24 high, 25 low, 25 high, 25 high. Actually, they're too low and they're too high. So they're 2,500 milliamp hours, both of those two. And that one there is 26. So 26, they're all 26 lows. They're all 26 highs. And we've got 27 high and then 27 low underneath it. We've got 28 high and 28 low. We've got 29 low and 29 high. We've got 30 low, 30 high. So now we've got to actually build this into a pack. So the way we're going to do this with cell holders, then we'll go through from highest to lowest, grab cells from here, and cells from here, cells from here, cells from here, and so on and so forth, all the way down. Put them in the cell holders. Start over and over again until we build the packs. And that way it'll give an even number of each cell in each pack and hopefully build a better, stronger pack. Placing new insulator rings for the positive terminal to give an extra layer of protection once the fused nickel sheets have been installed. Building out the first battery, we need to put six cells in here. Now these six cells are blanks, they're zero volt cells. The blue colour just indicates that they won't be connected. Now we actually need to take out nine cells out of here, the three cells here, the three cells here, and another three cells here that will be empty to allow the room for the holder to go in. So we take nine cells out. We take it from this bottom row because that stands to reason it's the lowest quality cells or the lowest amp hour cells and we just put them to the side. Now we'll be going through and resleeving anything that's not grey. So we'll be using these heat shrinks, quite handy to use. We'll go through the process of that a little bit later. But for now we've got to transfer everything from here into here. So we've got to turn them all over and put the positive side down so the insulators don't fall out. Now we're going to be running the, all the new cells that are heat shrinked on the outside to make them look nice all the way around the outside and put all these cells on the inside. So the ones that are already grey on the inside, anything that's not grey will get a new shrink wrap so it's all looking consistent. Using a small utility knife, I run the blade down the side of the cell from the positive end to the negative end to remove the old heat shrink. Then you can just run your fingernail over the cut to lift the old heat shrink and unwrap the cell. Being cautious not to lose the little white neoprene insulator underneath the stock heat shrink. Opening these shrinks is sometimes a little bit difficult. They're stuck together pretty well. I found the best way to do it is just to use your fingertips right at the very end and snap your fingers like you're actually clicking them. It opens them right up. Then they just slide on over. 
And the insulator rings go back in. And then give them some heat. Here we're removing the little green center that covers the positive terminal, exposing it, ready for spot welding. Using an empty 10 by 20 cell holder as a template, I used a bunch of small nails nailed directly into my bench to make a rough template for my bus bars. I initially used some stripped off plastic insulator off the wire I'll be using to figure out the length of the cable I'll end up needing to make the bus bars. I'm using some 10 mm square or 7 gauge wire that's typically used for earth wire in modern homes for 240 volt power in Australia. We strip off the green insulator, then twist the copper with a power drill to twist it just a little bit more than standard. If the wire isn't straight, try reversing the drill's direction for a bit and then back forward again, applying a little bit of pressure. The wire will quickly straighten and will look much better. Parallel connection to the 18650 cells is completed with 5P fused nickel strip supplied by battery hookup. The spot welding duties have been taken care of by a K-weld spot welder powered by a K-cap and a K-supply attached to a HP served with power supply. I'm almost through all my spot welding and I've come across a few ways to make this go a little bit faster and a little bit cleaner. Now there's, there's two ways that this nickel strip can go on. It comes off the roll like this and it's quite curled up. All the nickel is actually sticking up a little bit. We'll take it from down here. The nickel itself, the little fusy bit, is sort of sticking up just a little bit. Whereas if you turn it over, it's sitting down into the hole quite nicely. I've also found from the spot welds that I've done from the last few days, we, you can see here I've done the spot weld on this angle. So across this way. Now that is to avoid, there's a, the, the cell joins there with the fuse and then around here. So if you weld on this angle, it actually avoids any chance of shorting out this fuse and blowing it. Similarly it also allows you to go nice and fast you can just go all the way along and I've got it down to about when I do one of these cells on this side in this particular fashion I had probably a 95% success rate getting all the spot welds right the first time but more importantly I can get it done in like three minutes. The settings I'm using on the K weld I'm using 24 joules um, and then you can adjust that with the knob all the way up and down. That seems to be the perfect balance between speed and performance. Uh, mode, I'm on auto mode. So that way when I come over here, I, there's no foot pedal or anything attached to this K-Weld unit. 
and it spot welds on. So as soon as you contact those two tips, it automatically spot welds. Now you can set the trigger delay. We go, I've got 0.4 seconds. If you are newer to it, I'd go one and a half seconds. When you're in this mode, you can sort of put it on, no, nah, it's not right, it's not quite there. And you can hold it down for a little bit longer, get it prepared, and then it spot welds. So if we come back over here, and we do, uh, where is it, trigger delay again. So that's 2.9 seconds. We'll come back down to two seconds, or 0.2 of a second. When you do this, you've got no time at all. You've got to do it. Ah, you've got to hit enter. This way, you've got no time at all. You've got to actually get it on, and it spot welds straight away. But doing it this way does allow you to rip out the spot welds quite quickly. If you ever mess up and you actually need to take these nickel strips off, they're not really hard. All that I usually use is a pair of pliers. Grab it at one end, nice and firmly hold the battery pack down. And pull it off. Then all we have to do is grab a pair of snippy tools and then roll it across and pull the nickel strip off. And as you can see, it's spot welded down quite well. With only two points of spot weld rather than four, I'm very happy with the way that actually holds down. It doesn't need to be any more than that for the load it's gonna be under. To attach the bus bars to the nickel strip, I've been using this 150 watt soldering iron. It's a beast of a unit. In combination with the soldering iron, I've been using rosin core solder. Now I picked this up from the local hardware store in the plumbing section. Soldering iron is probably overkill, but it has the thermal mass to do the job quickly and efficiently. So basically all that I've been doing is holding it down there for a few seconds, grabbing my solder, sliding a little bit on, now I'm heating up the nickel strip, as well as the copper bus bar. Hold it down for a second, take it off, give it a few seconds to cool down, and then move to the next one. Position it. Get a solder. Push the bus bar down. Let the flux do its job into the copper bus bar. And we're done. The lugs I'll be using are 35 by 8, so they're 35 square millimetres. So they fit on there, and that's a nice fit. It's not loose, but it's not too tight either. Uh, and they're 8 millimetre holes, so that's what the 8 is after that. To crimp them on, I double crimp them, so I crimp them twice on each terminal. And I use this hydraulic crimping tool, just from eBay, with the 25 millimetre dies. Once crimped, we slide a little bit of heat shrink over the top and then hit it with some heat. Once the cell's been put together and the bus bar's been attached, we bring it over here to the charger and discharger station. I use this little iCharger X6, fantastic little unit. It'll do a 30 amp charge and discharge to and from a battery bank. So it'll do regenerative discharge, so we're not wasting too much energy. Uh, it'll do a charge and discharge cycle every 24 hours or so. And these batteries are coming out in between 480 amp hours and 400 and base 495 amp hours. So they're fairly close considering they're almost 200 P packs. So one of my Patreon members has asked me about the voltage drop between the negative and positive having the terminals at either end and the design of my bus bar and the nickel fuse strip. So I thought I'd run you through a just a quick test. Now we'll get the positive terminal and the negative terminal. 
So we're just going to go there, nice, nice and firm and consistent, and on the positive, all the way at the other end. And we've got 3.18 volts. Now I'm going to go down five cells at a time and sort of in the middle of the pack. So we start from this end and we'll go on the nickel strip, not on the actual bus bar itself. And we've got 3.19 volts at that end. About five cells up. 3.19. 3 3.19. 3 3.18. So 0 0.01 of a volt difference there. And then all the way down the other end, 3.18 again. So there's 0 0.1 of a volt difference between the two ends. And we are on a constant 29.99 or 30 amp load there. And we're at the bottom of the pack. So we've got the balance voltage from the balance cable is 3.2 volts. And the battery voltage at the terminals is 2.94 volts. With the 14th battery complete, now this completes this 14S. 193p battery, making almost 2,818650 cells, recovered exclusively from old laptops. I'm really excited to share with you the next two episodes of this story. In the next episode, I'll be removing the 10 kilowatt hour battery I've had in service for the past four years or so, and replacing it with this one. In the final episode, I'll be installing the battery management system, cable management, and doing a couple of load tests. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification so you get notified when my next videos are released. So tubers, thank you very much for tuning in. This has been an enjoyable one and I'll see you on the next one. You like an animal. We don't need you not like everyone. That's